Several weeks ago and now months, the course of history was changed with the outbreak of coronavirus. As a result, life and daily activities have taken a new turn. Every day, new cases are confirmed. Some are recovering and others are dying too. We are in a quite unprecedented times. There have been people on the front lines working tirelessly to salvage the situation, particularly the health workers, doctors, nurses, clinicians, some of whom have died in the line of duty during this outbreak. We salute them all. But away from these known frontliners, there are other silent heroes who make the work of these other frontliners possible. Today, in celebrating the heroes of COVID-19, we bring you the stories of these individuals, drivers, security operatives, sanitation executives, otherwise known as cleaners, who, in spite of it all, must have to do their job to help others achieve theirs in these trying times of COVID-19. I'm so happy that we are being interviewed because it's as if we are being regulated to the background, but I want to thank you for remembering us. Um, I'm among the essential worker. My duty is to come here, sanitize the environment, especially inside the hospital, the restrooms, and other areas. Um, I make sure that the surfaces are wiped clean, especially patients. Sometimes we do have patients. Despite the lockdown, we have a lot of patients coming in. So I wipe the door off the surface area and it has not been easy but with God all things have been possible. Um, I know that there is a risk coming to the hospital despite the lockdown but people that come in here we make sure that their hands, they wash their hands or they will give them a sanitizer for their hands and then face masks. So with that we are safe. Thank God is yet another sanitation executive and he says it has not been a bed of roses. But he is finding ways of remaining relevant while staying committed to his duty. There is COVID-19 out there and we are all afraid. So, but we have no choice because we have to carry out our duties. Like we don't, we don't even have any choice to. So you just have to do what we have to do. And Studies show us that the COVID-19 the virus can, can stay on surfaces for about a few hours. So we do carry out precautions and we spray from time to time in order to prevent the virus. And we make sure we do anything possible to avoid contacting the virus. And and we also practice social distancing. So like after spring and doing all the works, I come back here to my laptop and carry out my own isolation here because I don't want to make contact with people out there. Thank God also notes the fact that fear is real during this time, but in spite of his fears, he has to do the work. But thankfully, as a young music blogger, there is a place of comfort and solace. Well, to me, I'm kind of afraid of the virus because I'm the first person to touch all, all the things that people pass by every day and all that. But, but I make sure I carry out precautions. And, and I wash my hands always and also use disinfectant and sanitizers. So I, I'm kind of scared. I can't lie, I'm scared, but I just have no choice. So I have to carry out my duty and do whatever I can to prevent the virus. After doing my primary assignment here, so I come back to my laptop to do my online business. That I blog about music and entertainment and it has really been of a great help to me. Because during this time, we can't, we can't really go out there to do some other us or another. So the best thing to do is to work online. And I'm really happy doing it and it's, it's also interesting. So I run a music and entertainment site and and because I know no matter what, no matter what the world is going through, People will surely sing and an artist will pay to blog their song and all that. So 
It's really motivating and all that. And so is Dare, who says he's aware of the risks involved, but he has to do the work. I'm afraid because I don't know who is coming in. So we always make sure the person that comes in, you examine the person very well, the way you walk in. You make sure you spray the premises and check maybe there's anything coming in and again going out. So it's a risk. Would they rather prefer to stay at home and keep safe? Oh yes, but duty calls. That's a lot of challenge for me. Uh, sometimes I feel bad. Sometimes I also look at like, it's the way the work is, that is the media house, you have to work. Even though it is um, a day that is supposed to be at home, they will call you for work, so you accept it as your work. And on the gates of offices of those who must work are security personnel, constantly opening the gates, closing them behind others, and with COVID-19, ensuring that everyone who comes in is sanitized. It's really been difficult just because the way we worked before, this is now how we work now. We have to apply some kind of works to this section just because of what is going on. By attending to people, sanitizing them, and doing some other things that we are not doing before. So like seriously, it really be a little difficult for us because that is not what we do before. Just because we are paramilitary, so we are at work 247. We just have to carry out our duties and to make sure things are in order. Uh, when the lockdown was actually imposed that not going out because of the COVID-19, I think the model of operation changes. Normally, we normal, the time we normally leave our house before is no longer the time we normally leave our time house anymore. The stress of getting vehicle, the cost of transportation has changed, and sometimes we are afraid of not meeting the wrong people on the way. And these are not the things we normally experience before. I think the last time I came to Libya, it was very expensive for me. And I have to say to some of the boys that they will not rough handle me on my way. So I think the, the experience is so it's fat. It's difficult than before. We cannot deny the fact that these are indeed unprecedented times. And to make work go on for those people who must, they are faced with different challenges as well. There is a lot of workload surrounding what I do as I am the head of security in my bank. But luckily, the bank has invested in a kind of a special training for pandemics like this. But areas where we personally, we are the front line, the security operative, areas where we are having challenges is uh, areas of transportation. Like I remember vividly two weeks ago, I have to trek all the way from CMS to, to VI legally. It's something I've not done since I was born. But because of, I have to be at my beat to manage my boys, I have to be at work. We are sure that we checked people properly, their body temperature is below the uh, 37 point. And after that, we are sure that we also sanitize their hands or wash their hands before gaining access to the premises. So I don't think that's be a joy doing this. In the face of it all, there are men and women who will keep the streets and roads clean even during this period. We are on duty because this COVID-19 pandemic, we can't stay at home. We have to work for, the, for our community so that everything could be okay. But we that we are here working, it is not happy for us to be here, but we are in our state and we are in our Nigeria, so we have to do the necessary things for our, our country. How about law enforcement agents like policemen and women who are on the way under the sun to ensure that no one flouts the lockdown order? We recognize the crucial roles of those who work in the hospitals this time and always, but we want to notice people like Savior who pull the plugs in the background. 
if there is an emergency, if the ambulance is being down, there is no way we can convey a patient from his location to this place. So my own duty is to ensure that everything, both from the equipment, the machines are all put in place. The lockdown order, as you know, also restricts every vehicular movement, except for those on essential duties. And this means that drivers like Ehota, who works in a hospital, must still be on the wheel. We have been here since the beginning of uh, COVID-19. Then we can't, person like me, I can't go because my work is very, very important because our workers, they live in different places and no vehicle to convey them, no transport. Then for that reason, I have to be on the road every day to make sure they be at work. Then leaving in the morning, pick them from their bus stop to bus stop. Some live in a very you know, deep uh, street, but still yet we went there to, to pick them and bring them here. Then sometimes it's hard. In the, sometimes in the, some, some move, go home in the night, you don't want to change GT. But as a driver, you don't have a choice. You have to do it because it's your work. Being at work by this time is not comfortable but because you don't know who, because now everyone is a suspect. You don't know who and who has this particular you know, disease. It's a risk. He acknowledges that it hasn't been easy at all. His family always in his heart. I mean, it's not easy because I have a family too. I leave my family at home, but I communicate with them. Don't worry, God is in control. That's what makes me stay, you know, because of the guideline they gave us and the, the precaution we need to follow for everything. Now, thank God it's about to get an end and still here we are here. Still we are here. Thank God for everything and thank God for the United Heart uh, you know, Organization that make us be able to do what we need to do and how we need to do it. We celebrate these and many more unsung heroes of COVID-19 as we all strive to keep safe and keep alive. For Plus TV Africa, Amaka Ukoye.